So this video is about oscillograph. I have made quite a few different oscillographic installations. An oscillograph is basically like an oscilloscope, but just made into an installation. An oscilloscope visualizes sound waves using phosphorescence and light. The installation that I've made uses sound, lasers and phosphorescence, and I'll show you the setup later on. In my work, I'm really interested in visualising things that can't be seen. So in previous times, I've made an oscillograph which visualises pulsar stars. And because they spin really fast, they send pulses to Earth, which can be detected by a radio telescope. So they use the waveform data and make that into a sound to an audible spectrum. But these sounds aren't visible. So what I wanted to do was to visualise that sound. So that was very simple, it was just a laser pointed at a mirror on a mirror that wasn't really attached to a speaker and as the speaker moved, the mirror moved around quite a lot as well and because the laser was pointing at it, it pointed directly to a phosphorescent piece of paper and you could see the waveforms on the piece of paper. Then I decided to make a cosmic ray oscillograph following a project at the laboratory of Dark Matters which was a project in 2017 looking at dark matter detection. And I used dark matter detection data from a laboratory in North Yorkshire called Boolby. And I then sonified this data with help from Steve Aishman. So I used a laser that was on a solenoid and the sound moved the solenoid, which meant that the laser went up and down. And this meant that it drew patterns onto a phosphorescent disk and this phosphorescent disc was made out of wood and it was um, put in a completely dark room and on a mirror ball motor. So instead of drawing over itself on the phosphorescent piece of paper, uh, the disc was able to move and it meant you could see the phosphorescent light fading away where the old parts had been drawn and the new parts were really bright because phosphorescence holds light for a short amount of time and then re-emits it slowly. Then I was commissioned by the European Commission in 2019 to work with a quantum entanglement physicist called Kostas Kutsumichos. And Kostas shared with me his quantum entanglement data and I was able to sonify that data by the help of Steve Aishman and make two different quantum entanglement oscillographs. So it was important to have two and use two sets of data um, to show that there aren't any detectable differences between the oscillographs. For this installation, I used phosphorescent powder and encased it within resin. Um, and this clear resin allowed the light to pass through, which kind of gave a multi-dimensional effect. And this meant that the drawings looked a lot finer, more so than they would with the phosphorescent paint on wood. And this was installed, first of all, at the JRC European Commission Centre in Italy. And then it was shown at Beaux-Arts in Brussels in 2020, in January 2020. Then more recently, at the beginning of this month, I made an ocean oscillograph for the Ramsgate Festival of Sound. So for this installation, I used data from the tides in Dover. And I used the data from the high tide and the low tide the heights and the duration of the tides. And this data was turned into sound. I used a tin which was circular and put a rubber casing over the top and then when I put the speaker inside the drum the rubber casing from the tin vibrated and on this rubber is a little circular mirror so when the sound from um, the data is played through the speaker it means that the mirror starts vibrating and if a laser is pointing at that mirror that is going to project oscillographic um, spirograph type drawings onto the phosphorescent disc. And again, because the phosphorescent disc is moving, that means that you can see all of the different waveforms. I'm really excited to say that the installation is going to be part of 
This museum is not obsolete, which is focused on obsolete and experimental technology in both sound and photography. So for the museum, instead of using data, we're actually wiring in the sound into a synth. So when you come and play on the synth, then you'll be able to control what is projected onto the phosphorescent disc. So it's actually now really interactive and I'm really excited about the potential of all the different sounds that can be made. So this is a mirror bar monitor with a phosphorescent disc on it. And here you can see the laser pointing at a speaker with a mirror on it, which is playing the synthesizer sounds and projecting all the way over to the phosphorescent disc over there. Thank you.